Wait, how much of that actually happened? Yeah, it happened. No way! Just a couple of silly friends talking about serious stuff. Welcome! Welcome to Not What I Was Expecting. Two friends react to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend! On that side, we have got... Enough! On that side is... Limber! Yay! Welcome back. It is the season finale of season one. Who knows what's in store for us today? Well, I kind of do. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, with everybody finding out that Rebecca's sleeping with Greg. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna... Just gonna, like, hey, yeah, everybody's gotta just have to be okay with this now. Yeah. Yeah, I was... I, I was thinking about that, and, um about last episode and and thinking about like why why she would want to be um denying her needs like why why is that why do we all want to be the cool girl with no needs? Is that like the result of some kind of people letting you down or people hmm. people sure. saying that you're that you're weak or like what what I mean it could be any number of things, but yeah, like that one kind of struck me. Like just because I also want to be somebody who doesn't have needs. Right? I just want to so, be convenient to love. Low maintenance. Cool. We're always told high maintenance is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Have needs is bad. I feel like that's a pretty common sentiment in this society. That, you know, the whole radical self reliance and bootstrapping of this culture is not very forgiving to reality and people's needs, people's real needs as human beings. I also wanted to circle back to like two episodes ago, the one where it was the dream. Mm -hmm. Um, Having a dream about therapy does not replace therapy. That's true. Just, I just wanted to kick that one out there. Should we talk about our comments? Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, I'm so excited. Speaking right. of past episodes. Speaking of past episodes, which we love to do. Thanks! Thank you for the support in us choosing to not re-record an episode and uh, do so in genuinely. It's about reactions. Not practice reactions. I mean that's what that's what that's what we're all looking for. That human sincerity. That's why bad acting is so intolerable. Like we know that you you're lying. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Yoel Paardi for bringing up the point that this is the happiest that we have seen Greg ever when he sings about giving Rebecca a UTI. Yeah. And yeah, like I get, I get what you're saying. Like 
this is something that happens too often not to talk about as far as how the rest of a media has all decided to just kind of sweep this whole situation under the rug. Like, UTIs happen. And even though the song really grossed me out, I'm glad we talked about it. And I also really connected with the song um, I Could If I Wanted To when I first watched it. And I think that it is a phrase that I have used a few times throughout my life. I've noticed myself saying it. And I think that it has meant different things at different times. Like, there have been times that I've said that as a way to dismiss the very real skill that something took to make. Um, But I have also said it in a way where it's making me recognize that I have skill that I wasn't acknowledging that is valuable um, and sort of looking at it in a new way. So I think when you become aware of yourself having those thoughts, that can be a really good time for reflection about what that means for your life. And I think that you bring up a really good point about Greg not figuring out what works for him and what is good for him he's just complaining about what doesn't work. And I think that is definitely a stage that I had to go through in my life as well. But I could, but I won't. But I could, but I won't. <laughs> just St. Deany. Yeah, the UTI is just about how men sound when they feel proud about these kinds of things. Yeah, I think that seeing it through Rebecca's eyes and her like going like that throughout the the song did help to provide a counter counter view of that. <laughs> Her being like you know, embarrassed for him. <laughs> if I think about it as Rebecca's eyes seeing Greg in that moment and then singing a song about spreading the, about giving a UTI like to me, it makes a little more context for, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. This is, ex- no, it's exactly what you said, J. St. Danny. Also, we've got some really important stuff for v- VHS. Um... We've got some great advice. We were we were kind of we were we were kind of lost in a in a not sure exactly what to say moment when we want so hard to promote the idea that a UTI is something that you should go to the doctor for, but we're also being given the message that there your privacy will not be percept, pr- uh, protected. Um. Lots of great advice in the comments. Thank you very much, Rajananana. Falangido to the. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, there's some amazing advice in the comments here, and I I hope that we will continue to get people contributing to this comment thread. Um, you can find it in episode 17. Here's the card. What was going on with Paula? She's having trouble, major trouble adjusting to their non Josh dynamic, and then she got all fucking pissed at Rebecca, even though she won the pie contest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we left off with her just extra. Oh, right, looking down. Yeah, the way of simultaneously having everyone find out about how they were sleeping together. It it was an inelegant but effective solution. It means to an end. Yeah. Beginning of a conversation. I mean, I sort of wonder why they didn't have Greg just say it openly because he didn't think to hide it. But 
whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would have accomplished the same thing. Like, well, she didn't tell me we were a secret, so I didn't think not to tell you. Like, I don't know. I feel like it could have just come up in conversation without the doctor mm -hmm. having to say anything. Oh, speaking of medical professionals, are, we're are, not. We're not. We're not. Nor do we own the content. We're just we're just chitting and chatting and reacting and giggling. Let's dive in, shall we? Season finale, season one. Episode 18. And this is something that is a long time coming. Paula needs to get over Josh. You gasp. You know, gasp. Just go like this. <gasps> Such a cute little director. doing this i have a memory just like this from childhood <laughs> you feeling better bunch yeah hey i'm sorry i ruined your hot date never wanted to be there to begin with what about your hot dates next week i made those up those were fake Look, being genuine with each other feels good yeah i have calmed down i am ready to speak to rebecca so yeah, you you look super calm. That's that is the face of calm. After everything I've done for your love story to get you together with Josh Chan and you betray me by picking sarcastic, alcoholic, unromantic Greg? Is that you bought a stupid balloon? No, no, no. This balloon is not stupid. <laughs> the Messiah is riding a unicorn over a rainbow. It's like the turducken of sympathy balloons. That is a good balloon. <laughs> it's a really good one. <laughs> but Rebecca isn't into you anymore. She's with me now. Fine. You give Rebecca these for me. But get used to me being her friend. We're connected. It doesn't bother me. And I don't care. And it doesn't bother me. Also, weird thing to say. And it doesn't bother me. Say hi to your very patient girlfriend. <laughs> That was, that was a meaningful exchange. That made me feel good. Yeah. Yeah, Greg setting up some boundaries. Boys mm -hmm. getting off territorial. He did say I have no problem with that several times. <laughs> yeah. And that's... I think you believe it a little less every time. But, you know, sometimes take practice. Some things take practice. It's true. I would have trouble trusting a person who did not have female or have hang on let me start over again i would have trouble trusting a person who did not have a variety of genders of friends I just yeah. feel like all of those perspectives should be in a person's life i agree wholeheartedly and i have had exes who have had problems with me having friends of people of various genders and um i have never understood it just does not make sense to me I'm not big on telling people who they can and can't be friends with but greg does also have a point that Josh should probably go home to his girlfriend. Mm hmm He he chose Valencia. Rebecca's moving on. Let her do that. Yeah. Under Lourdes Chance's car is a tracking device that is keyed into a beeper in my desk at the office. 
I had to smuggle that device in from Armenia. Paula is terrifying sometimes. <laughs> I did it for you. No, no, I didn't ask you to do any of those things. Paul is tired of being your sidekick, your henchman. Okay. Strike out on your own. You'll do great. This reminds me a lot of uh, Cellophane Man from Chicago. Particularly the movie version. I love John C. Riley. Yeah, he did a great job with that. He did an amazing job. The least you can do is be honest with your mom. I mean, friend. Oh. Oh. What's that look on your face? You're horrified. You're nothing without me. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, she's so good. Yeah. Oh, that performance. Oh, she's incredible. Oh. She made me sympathetic to what you didn't ask for. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, when you say it like that, it does kind of sound, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this show does an incredible job with helping us to see multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. Even as our viewpoint is E even though we do have an unreliable narrator. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, she is still... She does have those moments where she is able to connect with others and understand what they're trying to convey to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca's having it out with Paula Well, Greg's having it out with Josh. Oh, I was having a hard time, like just kind of changing, <laughs> just changing their own perspective, like a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think a lot of people just get trapped in their perceptions of themselves. Yeah. So, I mean, this kind of thing's an opportunity. Be new. Yeah. If you think you're over Josh, you are fooling yourself. I just love it when people tell me what I'm feeling. It's really gross. Flowers you like love because they hold a special place in your heart and have been there forever. And stick balloons should just give up because he's wasting his time. Oh. What? Ah. I'm fine. You're the one who's all over the place. Really? Gaslighting, super fun. Why did you freak out and leave? I don't know. Yeah, Craig has somebody you can talk to, too. That's what she likes, the not caring. Oh, uh, this is fear talking. You're just afraid she's going to hurt you again. I need to be like the uncaring bad boy. Oh, my God, you're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, from his perspective his attraction her her attraction to him has been all about his choices and his journey yeah don't you already have a bridesmaid's dress <laughs> i need a second look for the reception don't be insane brain pretty sure you're still not supposed to wear that <laughs> yeah i'm going to look for a ring just let me do it my own way in my own time is that okay? Of course. I'm gonna need a timeline. Yeah, that would be helpful. Six months. A year. Give me a timeline. Yeah. It's like when people I say, gotta like, know when to like, bounce when you don't do it. About her, I'm feeling super insecure about Greg. Yeah, and since you know him super well, I don't know, I thought you could help me out. N no. What? That's not the appropriate person to talk to. Yeah, that sounds like Greg. I mean, you know he gets, like, freaked about stuff. Yeah, we need, like, a moment, right? A moment, like, where the prince and the princess pledge their troth. 
You know, in one indescribable instant, the whole world falls away. Oh, God, you're one of those girls. But the moment you're craving isn't anchored in real emotion. It's a script dictated to you by our society's patriarchal love narrative. Tell them how you feel. Say, dude, I dig you. I got the feels. I don't care. Ugh. I thought his dad talked him out of that. He tried. Think he might have left off on calling him an idiot? I don't know. Wow, oh, it's Jamie's wedding invitation. <gasps> Gasp, how romantic. Oh, oh no! Don't go to this wedding! Yeah, after the wedding dress debacle? But I knew you were a bridesmaid and then you weren't. What happened there? Oh, it was nothing. It was just like a stupid clerical error, but uh, do you want to go together? Yeah. No. Uh, sh sure. I don't care. We, I could, um, we could, we could go. What an uber duper coinky dinky to run into you here. She's doing the same shit for Greg that she was doing for Josh. This yep. over the top manipulation. Bought Jamo a wedding present. Huh. <gasps> This retails for $2,499. I've been wanting to talk to you about what happened with James' wedding dress. Yes, that was unfortunate, but I know you didn't do it, Rebecca. If you could give this to Jama for me. I have a better idea. Deliver it yourself. Nobody's even gonna ask Jama how she feels about it. Okay. I mean, she's probably way too busy. Which means that if you believe that someone won't consent and that's the reason you don't ask, that's the reason that you absolutely should ask. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh... Don't ask permission, ask forgiveness is really bad consent advice. I'm not a huge fan. Pretty gross. When it comes to how to deal with other people. No, Paul, it's a whole nut. A whole nut. I'm looking for something really pretty, Moshe. It's going to be a very special evening. The start of a love story. Oh, how wonderful. So, have you uh, found your Bashert? Your soulmate, your destiny. Have you, have you found him yet? I found my soulmate. Josh. Rebecca, you want to see the engagement rings you were looking at before? Everybody's got professionals just blaring their bat, blaring their news all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so, you ready to make a choice? Today, you are going to tell Greg that you want to start a life together. Well, hello, Mr. Lumbird. What a wonderful, charming little bird actor. You look all right. Be genuine. All right, okay. I will take that. Sky and a lightly arrayed. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> yeah, we're fancy. Deal with it. Are you sure Greg is what you want? I mean, he's so sarcastic and dark and. You're not that. You're sweet. Um, it's gross. I'm just afraid there will be a moment when he lets you down. Then I'm gonna deal with it by myself like an adult. Yeah. Or not by myself. Because everybody's got a little community. But without you. Oh. And a dip. Oh. And a dip. Okay. <laughs> That's not how dipping works. Yeah. <laughs> Or dancing. Or dating. I, no, no, just, just stop, stop, stop. I, let's really dance, dude. Please, come on. Please, for me. She's also taking it too seriously and has Ten. expectations that are not super realistic. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. What are you trying to do? What, what is all this? You know what, you're right. Let's dance for real. Let's show off your dress, come on. Okay, I kind of think it's adorable. 
<laughs> I don't know. Just the idea of him being like sad clown while he just like rolls around on a scooter is just hilarious to me. Yeah. What wedding live streams photos? Or did did Paula hack into the photographer's like? No, I've, cloud. I've seen that before. Like they'll they'll choose a cute little cute little uh, hashtag with some kind of pun about the last names, right? Hmm. I am so sorry. Oh, oh my you look like a princess. Oh my God, you look like a princess. You look beautiful. You look like a sea princess. I, I feel like so. But if you really like Greg, you should tell him right away. I mean, don't waste a single second. I'm sorry that was advice. I love you, Paula. I love you too. Yay. I wanted to get it before your cousin Ruby. Oh my God, Valencia. You didn't have any faith in me. You didn't give a timeline. Didn't know when to expect it. The reason I asked for that ring is because deep down, I didn't believe you were gonna do it. Let's take that ring and get up on the bandstand and steal some wedding thunder and get engaged right now. You're not listening to me. Also, that's a really uncomfortable thing to do. I had an artificial view of how I wanted this night to go. No, it's my fault. It's my fault. You want to break up with me. Oh. Poor buddy. Okay, I think... You're cool. We have fun together, yeah, but let's not... What are you doing? Plan out our future. What are you doing? I need to, I need to take a I need to take a nap. Yeah, maybe don't try to have this kind of conversation with a drunk person. Also. I love how vague these lyrics are. It's indescribable because it's not real. Oh no! Don't do it! GTFO, lol. Come with me. Leather jacket? Do you have a motorcycle? Oh my, what is this car? Where did that come from? Oh yeah, we're. Oh, they stole the car! Is this like her mind, like. Giving a test. What are you kidding me? No, it's for real. <laughs> I should have said I love you. <laughs> oh, Greg. Wait, how much of that actually happened? Yeah, it happened. No way! I moved here for you. What? Huh? I'm so excited that our love story can finally begin. Craziest girlfriend. And that is the end of season one. <laughs> no way! That was not what I was expecting. Well, yikes. Both of their other previous partners don't have anything to say about that. Valencia broke up with Josh. Greg acted like a total asshole. Like, and said, keep it casual. Yeah. So, if anybody's pissed... Yeah, they're not on... They're not being... They're not crossing any agreed-upon boundaries at this point, so that's nice, but it still doesn't feel good. Yeah. I, I continue to be astonished for how 
naive Josh is. Like, what do you mean you had such strong feelings? I thought you moved here because you got a great job. Even though it was Daryl already admitted that it was like for like no money compared to what she was making. He puts no pieces together. Yeah, he does not think very critically about his life and the people around him much. I don't think that that is a skill set that he has spent time developing. I mean, he barely acknowledges his own feelings. Like, in being able to articulate them, he was just, like, mad. Angry. Yeah, back last episode when he was talking to, talking to Father Bra, saying, like, well, Greg's just a dumb face. Come on. Come on. Be grown. <sighs> yeah, he's... I think that his character is at this point in the show at a the point where he's realizing that he's sort of no longer a kid anymore and not and he's sort of transitioning into adulthood and it's an awkward step for him Mm -hmm. oh yeah not a smooth transition and that also surprised me like rebecca had set herself up so hard yeah to want this to want a moment just like all this pent up emotional romantic aggression ah yeah (laughs) I'm really glad that she and Paula got back together yeah that was really sweet I've had moments like that with friends where you know you just both hurt a lot and you both wish you would have handled it a little differently. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it really does need time. You know, it does. You need the time apart. Reconfigure. Also, we really haven't checked in with our husband in a while. I wonder how that's going. Did it just get fixed? I don't know. He does come back later. Okay. I do I do love the song and calling out that sort of ultra romantic culture and the problems that it causes. I mean when I was I, I did have feelings like that like in my teenagerdom. Mm-hmm. But I realized later that something I I really like the little the the romantic every day, the sustainably romantic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Like one of my favorite things to do is to hide little notes for my partner around. Um, they're just going about their day and find a note, being like, "You're really hot." <laughs> Just thought you should know. Sweet. That's sweet. That's a sweet little way. I just want to thank everybody um, for this beautiful community that has grown around this show. Um, I'm just really happy to be a little part of it. And comment, like, or subscribe. Should you feel so inclined. And uh, since we've just hit the end of our first season and we both have a couple things piling up in our personal lives, we're going to take a little break from filming for a while so we can sort that out and come back refreshed. So we'll see you soon. We really enjoy this time with you. Yeah. Happy end of season one. Happy end of season one.